So I've been playing around with the caching feature in Typeform and it is pretty cool. So in this video, I'm gonna do a quick overview of how it works and how you can use it yourself. Now to start off, we're gonna be opening up your ORM config and adding a setting. So we need to set the cache to true uh, in the ORM config and then we can set individual queries, tell Typeform that we want those to be cached. Now. I'm using GraphQL, so I added also tracing set to true since I'm using Apollo. Uh, just when I created my Apollo instance, just so I could see speed wise how fast things are running. So you may want to do the same. Uh, and I'll show you this when we run some queries in a second. And then after that, um, you can either use the query builder or I'm going to show an example of a non query builder. Um, and I have a query here, and you'll notice. Uh, just I said dot cache at the end and set it to true. So now what's going to happen is type orm is going to cache that uh, query. Now what I mean by caching is the default and this is what I'm calling the default is when you just say cached true. The default behavior of this is it's going to create a table in your database to uh, store the results of the query and then it's going to prevent future queries from hitting the database original table, it's going to hit this new cache table. But this will make more sense when we take a look at it in a second. Uh, note that I added this PG sleep to my query, so it's pretty slow. So it's sleeping for one second. So uh, here's my books query. We're just going to try running it and see how long it takes. So I'm going to run it and you see how it was read for just a second. Um, that is it being slow. We can even increase this to like three seconds if we want to be even longer. And basically it's just sleeping and it's slow. Um, all right, three seconds. And then when this is back to this state, that means it's done loading. Now, if I run that and I click it again very quickly afterwards, you'll notice it like instantly returned. I don't know if you could even see me clicking. And that's because it hit the cache. Now, uh, when it caches values, uh, what I was talking about earlier is that it actually creates a table in your database called query result cache. So when these queries are fired off, it is storing the result of them in this table. So I can look at, if you do backslash D while you have psql open, um, and you just say the table, you can see all the fields. So basically it's storing the query and the results of the query inside of this table, and that is how it's caching it. So TypeArm is actually caching your queries inside of Postgres in this table. And this really makes really only makes sense if you have like a really slow query that is doing maybe a bunch of groups or group by or computations uh, if you're just going to store it in Postgres. Now note that Postgres is not the only option to cache things in. So we can actually go back to our ORM config um, and we can say type Redis, and now it's going to be using Redis. I'm not going to go over all the uh, different options. If you go check out the uh, Typeform documentation, you can see there's a bunch of different options you can pass in to this. For example, if you want Redis to connect to a cluster, if you want to use IO Redis, and so on and so forth, um, and whether you want it to hit like what endpoint of Redis. But in this case, we're just going to say type Redis, um, and now it's going to be using Redis to store this data. And uh, now when I run this slow, I can click it again, um, and it'll be fast. Now you'll notice, I guess the default behavior is it only store, like caches it for like, I don't know, like a one second after it has occurred. So I click it, and then I can, uh, when it's done, click it a few times, and then it's slow again. So if we go to our ARM config, we can actually pass a duration here. And this is the default duration you want the values to be cached. So for example, we can say, and I believe this is in milliseconds. So here I can say 10 seconds I want to, uh, or 10,000 milliseconds I want to be cached for. So now I do a slow query um, and then I can click this and I can spam it and it's going to be, you know, come back really fast because it's cached until the 10 seconds are up and it's gonna, it's gonna be slow again, there we go. So, or the cache expires. So that gives you an idea. Globally, you can set the duration here. Um, and if we come back over here, 
Now, this was the odd part. We actually can't really do it. I don't think we can do any other options with the dot cache. That was the other thing is the documentation's documentation is not great um, on Typeform about how all the details of how caching works. Um, but I don't think with the query builder we can like specify how long this particular one runs for or is cached for. Um, but if we don't use the query builder, for example, if I just say book.find and we can run this, just run, it returns the same data. I can specify a ID for the cache, so in this case, book colon find, and then how long I want to be cached for, let's say five, uh, 50 seconds. So you can specify something different from the global default that we have set in the ORM config if you want to. And then we can run this, and then it's gonna be cached for a while, and we can just spam that. So you can pretty much individually cache queries um, by adding this cache to it. And that is how you do caching on each query. So you need to add that. It does not just globally cache everything when you set caching up over here. The last part that I wanted to really go over, the last part that I learned while trying this out was revoking the data. So for example, um, if we come back up over here, when we create a book, I wanna be able to clear the cache. So I can do that by saying get connection and then there's this query result cache. So this query result cache um, is undefined also possibly. So I just asserted it and I'm removing the key from the cache. So in this case is book.find. So first let's remove this. Let's say I'm not even running this. What's, what is the effect? So you notice I run this, oh, do I have probably because this is unused. There we go. So I have this one book here. Let's create another book. Three, run it again. And since this is cached, right, we're not getting the result back. So this will clear the cache whenever I'm adding a new book. And that way we uh, re-hit the database, get the new data. All right, so run this. I mean, I guess it's still hitting the cache value, so I should come over here and reset it. All right, four, run it, come back, and you'll notice we immediately hit the database and we see these values there. So that's kind of the gist of it. You're gonna add cache to it, and you can just say cache true here as well, if you want to. So the two settings are cache true or pass in an object, specify the ID and the number of milliseconds you want to be cached for. Um, I don't know if you can pass in like zero or something for it to be cached infinitely. Um, not sure about that. So that was kind of one thing that I would like to do, um, but I'm not sure if possible. And then being able to remove stuff, we use that key. So that is how you can do it in Typeform. It is quite easy to set up. Um, but I don't know, it feels a little weird how Typeform does it and it feels like you don't have a ton of control. I may like, if I was, I may, I could see myself using this, but I could also see myself wanting more control about how things are cached, how long they're cached and the caching algorithm that's used, um, in particular. So I could see myself also implementing my own caching on top of Typeform instead of using their default one, depending on what I'm using. But it's kind of good to know about, very easy to add on, so I definitely could see myself using it. Anyway, give it a try. That is how caching in Typeform works.